Welcome to the Cowfish Show, an exploration in human evolution, raising consciousness, creating happiness, fulfillment, and love one soul at a time. I'm E.L. Brooks, a newly awakened soul on a mission to help people find their happiness and truth. And I'm Lindsay Kimura, a happiness explorer empowering humans in wisdom and understanding. The universe united us to share our passions. Welcome Welcome to to our our show. show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Eric. And I'm Lindsay. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us today. Um, We have some exciting, an exciting topic. Um, But first, a word from our sponsors. Today's show is being sponsored by Magnum Watch, not just any watch. I'm actually rocking the uh, Benedita, which is a 50 millimeter um, watch that is, I think, around $299. Once again, you get a lot of watch for your money. Uh, All listeners get a 25% discount coupon by using the coupon code COWFISH25. Um, Season 1, Episode 2. Today we're discussing why do we criticize the meaning behind judgment. Um, So would you like to jump into that? Yeah, so I guess we want to start by defining what is judgment. So there's that sense of the word that is the higher judgment, right? Like we're being evaluated, that divine type of judgment. But what we want to talk about today is judgment of ourself and judgment of others and how that is not very helpful because it takes away our energy, it takes away our power, and really it doesn't serve us other than to be a mirror. So when we judge others, we want to ask, what is it about them and what we're judging? that's reflecting back to us something we need to change or to become aware of. So using judgment as a mirror. And then also uh, changing the judgment into discernment. So there's a difference between judging others and then discerning or making wise choices based on evaluation. So we're going to get into what's the meaning of judgment, why it doesn't serve us, and then we're going to pinpoint areas where we can look at where we judge and become aware of it. We may not even be aware, like we talked about in episode one, subconsciously things lie in our realm and we act a certain way, but it's not always the most healthy way. And it's first step, like Eric said in in, uh, episode one, is to become aware that we're doing this. Um, So yeah, I would say, uh, what are your thoughts, Eric, on judgment? Well, I goes back, you'll be hearing me talk about the narrative. Um, once again, it goes back to society's big dream, uh, where the narrative is, is connected to the ego, to our lower selves. Um, it's living in a condition of society with limiting beliefs and limitations. And so in essence, the byproduct of the narrative is that we develop these false and limiting beliefs, uh, especially when we're in the first level of consciousness. Um, our The narrative is built around this reward punishment system, that basically is fear-based and it creates subconscious structures that um, refer we refer to as normality. Um, and anything that is different from normality is feared and criticized. Um, so when we talk about normality, normality is, um, you know, you'll find normality within the school structure, you'll find normality within individuals' homes, you'll find normality within the church, Uh, your neighborhood, your state. So what's normal for somebody in California may not be normal for someone in Texas. What's normal in America may not be um, normal for someone in Egypt. And so we judge and we criticize that what we do not know or do not understand, um, basically from fear of being different, challenging our beliefs, our false beliefs of what is supposed to be, so to speak. So anything that challenges that, um, ends up, we end up criticizing, uh, and we end up judging and it's, um, it's very catastrophic, especially when it, uh, comes to relationships and love, um, which we talked about in episode one, which is the, you know, the, the, the pathway to happiness. So, um, I'd like to quote, uh, Charles Adams. And, um, so norm, normal, normalcy is, an illusion. So, um, normal is an illusion. What is normal to the spider is chaos for the, for the fly. So if we think about those things, our image 
of perfection, um, which I talked about in episode one. Uh, the two images we have, this image of perfection is the image of what we feel we need to be in order to be accepted. Um, because of those false images, um, is the reason why we kind of criticize and we reject ourselves. And it's one of the reasons why we reject others because we have these set beliefs and if anything challenges them, we said, oh, you're wrong or you're bad or we're wrong or we're bad. And it's, um, once again, like I said, it's very catastrophic. So, yeah. And I think it stems from that survival mechanism or mentality where there's not enough for everybody. And so we feel as if in order if we judge, then somehow that will make us better and it'll make us feel better and we'll be on top because we can speak badly about somebody or or think badly about somebody. And it might not even be badly. It might just be comparison-wise, like this person is not at that standard. And again, the standards are all relative. But I think getting to the root of why humans even judge is because of a deeply seated insecurity or fear that stems back to survival and how we had to vie for resources and to to compete in order to have enough so somehow it gives us this false sense of empowerment when we judge like when if we can talk about well you know I do this and this person does that or or comparison wise it may make us feel think we're feeling better but actually we're taking away our power and energy because think about all those thoughts that go to to others to someone else or to comparison or even to comparing yourself against a norm and it's not the best use or the most healthy way of or of or for us to express our energy uh, but once we realize that we don't need to live in survival mode anymore and that the universe does have infinite supply and that's one of the universal laws is that we do have an infinite amount of resources available to us then we can tap into that and we won't feel the need to have to compare or or fight to to get enough yeah so i want to touch on something that you said uh, so our our initial judgment actually does come from the primal brain in the very beginning um it was a survival te techniques um we refer to it today as sweeping judgments everyone has it i like to call when you elevate your consciousness it becomes sweeping con discernment um, but back in the day when we were you know primal it was literally survival It's you know, we, we had to judge to see if the, you were friend or foe. Um, and as over time that evolved. And once again, like I said, once we got tired to the narrative, um, then all of these hierarchies started developing because people do want to feel, you know, uh, more superior for some reason. Um, well, not for some reason, because of the ego. Um, and so these hierarchies started developing. And the funny thing about it is that we, um, when you're at the first level of consciousness, there's this neurotic self-concern that we have for ourselves. We're like, well, what do people think about us? And, and the irony is that they're not necessarily thinking about you because they're thinking about themselves. Like, what is that person thinking about me? And so we, we you know, we're, we're kind of self-consumed um, but at the same time, um, it does go back to the amount of suffering on, there's a, there's a continuum, you know, there's, there's suffering to the point where, we, um, I think as Dr. Brene, um, Brown talks about, um, uh, we all are addicts, um, uh, at some point, you know, there's, there's your real addict that is, um, you know, substance abuse, alcohol, drugs, or whatever. And then there's the numbing addict on the lower plane where, you know, we're working for the weekend, right? Friday hits, I'm just fucking, you know, either doing my Netflix and chill, um, numbing myself to the point where I can get through the weekend um, to face another week at work that I'm not really happy about, right? And so as that suffering bubbles under, um, you start to lash out, you know, once again, it's fear-based. So you're, you're lashing out in anger. So if someone challenges you or you, 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 or triggers you is, is, is really the kind of the key word, then you lash out and you want to, um, judge 
or criticize that particular person because you are suffering and you're at your lower self. Um, yeah, and I would say judgment in general really lowers your vibration. And when you lower your vibration, you're going to stay on that plane. So I remember I was flying to the East Coast and for about five or six hours, however long the flight was, I sat next to two girls who were talking about other people the entire five to six hour flight. And it didn't make me feel good just hearing it. I didn't know the people or the people they were talking about, but it just was vibrating at a lower frequency. And we can't really um, elevate ourselves or expect to continue to raise our consciousness like our show's about Mm -hmm. if we're judging. And think about all the energy we put into directing toward judgment of ourselves or of others and where we could actually repurpose that energy and and do something good maybe plant some seeds for a creative project or put that energy into your family or your friends so it's just not uh, time best spent so I think we should talk a little bit now about how we can notice if we're judging and then how to change and shift those patterns because we may be doing it without even knowing. And I'm a, I even do self judgment where I think I'm bettering myself by being hard on myself, but it's really not yeah. the best, most nurturing way to be. Mm-hmm. So, what would you say? Well, I mean, the the short answer um, to it's it's really all comes down to the ego. Um, the ego is tied to the shame, the blame. Um, the ego is resides in first level of consciousness, which is referred to as again the victim level. Um, and so, yeah, we we criticize ourselves because it's the reward punishment system, where we're taught how to um, act and we're rewarded for acting good, and we're punished for for um, acting bad within the narrative, whether that's in school, whether that's in church, whether it's in our family and the parenting. Um, everything society you know it's you know traffic tickets or whatever anything that uh you know we are judged on because it is a judgment system that we that we live in then we process that and we have to elevate and come out of that um and because of the the society is all fear-based and once again love cannot reside in fear cannot coexist and then when you start to vibrate on a higher level then your all your intentionalities then change and you're no longer um, connected to the ego. You're actually connected to the source above and your reactions to other people's words, their unfortunate actions, um, your, your, your immediate response is compassion, empathy, kindness, um, and it all starts within yourself first, you know, and then you're able to then um, portray that uh, in, in in other areas of your life. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll get into the tips of yeah. how you get there. Yeah, and I was thinking, Eric, when you were talking about judging, that the, even the word judgment has the connotation that we're competing, mm-hmm. we're getting a score, or we're being ranked. And I think with our shift, especially from the Piscean era, where it was about hierarchy, structure, a higher ups, lower ups, ranking, and we're in the age of Aquarius where there's this complete kind of leveling out um, information for all, wisdom for all, um, dis- dissolution of infrastructure and this patriarchy and just hierarchy. Uh, judgment still exists, but it's not in in the way that we are traditionally used to for the past hundred thousands of years where it's been this ranking system of of people who do better succeed and people who do worse you know don't have as much so i think that it doesn't really have much of a a a place or a use and we can think about it as being in a category of one where again it goes back to not following the societal norm because that model doesn't apply anymore but rather finding your purpose. And as you fulfill your purpose, that's success in in itself. And there's no need to judge yourself or others as long as you're sticking and following uh, why you're here. 
So I think the moment you notice you snag up or have friction with another person or in, you're in a situation or a place, stop and pause and rather than reacting or letting your emotions carry you away or getting going down that route, you can ask, what about this person or about the situation is making me experience some emotional friction and then why am I creating thought forms and feelings in this situation? So if you're on Instagram and you're a little bit upset because you see your friend posting photos in Bali or the Maldives, wherever they are, then think about what is that reflecting back to you? Is it that you're working so hard you're not taking time to take vacation or leisure time? So anytime there's a a part of your day that causes a snag, ask yourself, how am I judging? Oh, why why am I feeling this way? And that's how you can start to explore the places that you judge and ask yourself, how is that mirroring back to myself of some changes that may need to occur? And remember, the changes can be very small. They don't have to be massive um, transformational shifts. Like you don't have to go book a two-week trip, but you can take 15 minutes break in your day. Yeah, that's great. Um, Well, here's the aha moment. Takeaway moment is... All judgment is self-judgment. And to to um, respond on um, what you had talked about is the subconscious. So we form these false beliefs, right? So some people, you know, and I'll be vulnerable. And, my, and mine was I was not worthy um, or was not good enough because I had a very strong father who was military-based that just, you know, had me overachieving but on my overachievement for some reason I had this false belief of not being good enough and so anything that would trigger me not feeling good enough I would react and I would judge and I would criticize I'd criticize myself or I'd react and criticize other people other people have um I think some of the top five false beliefs are I'm not lovable I'm not worthy I'm not enough um what are some of us um, I think those are the top three. Yeah, I think. Um, but anyway, so any so when you have that as your root, then you start to you you walk through life like that, right? And you have uh, any type of bad day, you run into a certain situation. Mine used to be road rage. For some reason, I used to think that everybody was out to compromise my drive, and so you know I would be the the best of myself, and I could hop in the car, and someone would be be compromising my drive my my perception was right and um it would trigger me like if they cut me off or if they you know um if i was driving fast and i passed somebody and they flipped me off i would literally like stop and you know roll down the window and challenge <laughs> and it was all fear-based it was all insecurities it was it was foolishness um so when you start to think, and like you just said, tap into why am I being triggered? Why am I, you know, forming these thought patterns that don't serve me, right? One of my biggest mantras right now is to do the habits that that are currently uh, not serving you, replace them with habits that, successful habits that will. And so that was a process that I went through. I was like, you know, I know that... Um, you know, me being triggered only elevated my anger, right? Which is a byproduct of fear. And I did not like being in that state of mind. So um, I had to look with inward. And like I said, all judgment is self-judgment. So un- the underlying process is that there's some insecurities. There is some uh, subconscious false beliefs that you need to tap into. And you need to clear those because they are. They're just false beliefs. And when we're... When we're at, um, here's a, here's a, another takeaway. When we are between the ages of two and eight, or one to seven, whatever they 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 have these age ranges. But anyway, when we're really really young, we have what is called the meaning making machine, and the meaning making machine is how babies make sense of the world that they're processing. Right. So at some point in time, we're actually. Um, we feel that we are being wronged or whatever, you know, in the school system, we're being taught, um, we're being judged on, you get a passing grade or you get a failing grade. I have a, a 
kindergarten. His son is in sixth grade right now, and he his he gets um, these color codes if he's doing good, if he's doing bad, and that's all judgment. And so we learn that, um, and uh, it it starts to l reside in our subconscious, and we don't necessarily. I, I look at it as a hard drive. We don't necessarily wipe that hard drive clean when we're 10, when we're 20, when we're, you know, 30. And sometimes we still have that false belief that we had, that we made as a kid who was trying to make sense of the world that still underlines, um, you know, our, 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 our sense of thoughts in the, in our adult world. Yeah. So we have a, you know, essentially like a six year old kind of driving this, 30 year old car, <laughs> right? which right. doesn't make sense. So, and, and, you know, we talk about clearing, which I want to get to later on, but we won't be able to do it in this episode. But clearing is one of the biggest things that I think elevates your consciousness and allows you to become free uh, and to release the ego. Yeah. And like you said, that, that idea of good and bad has become associated with judgment because of norms and societal decisions so if we remember that good and bad are relative what's good for one person may be bad for another and vice versa or what's a poisonous pond for a fish might be life-giving to another fish so it's taking away the good or bad of it and seeing where we can replace the habits that we formed and to look at yourself and start observing habits and patterns. So for me, I've always used my physical activities as this way to strive for perfection. Oh, my toes not pointed enough, my legs not straight, all these things. But really, um, it was just a way of showing judgment. And I think if we can break our patterns and ask ourselves what the why behind why we're doing things that can be a helpful tool so always get to the why yeah yeah so i want to end off on a couple of traits um from because we're all about happiness and so um, these are a couple of traits for uh, happy people versus unhappy people or successful people versus unsuccessful people um and, and uh, i'll read off the list here so successful people typically um, read every day, whereas unsuccessful and unhappy people watch TV every day. Um, successful people um, compliment people, um, whereas unsuccessful and unhappy people criticize. Successful people embrace change, whereas unsuccessful people fear change. Uh, happy people forgive others, whereas this is the biggest one, where unsuccessful and unhappy people hold grudges. That's a really, really big one. Uh, happy and uh, and successful people talk about ideas, whereas unsuccessful and unhappy people talk about other people. Uh, happy and successful people continuously learn. Um, I always stress um, uh, continued learning, higher education, uh, whereas unsuccessful people and unhappy people think they know it all. And the last is happy and unsuccessful. Uh, happy and successful people accept responsibility for their failures. I like to actually change that because there actually are no failures. That's um, that's a false belief. I believe that everything is a lesson. Um, whereas unsuccessful people and unhappy people um, blame others for their failures or lessons. Uh, and one of the things that um, I also like to well, well, I'll actually give you, and then I'll say I'll give you one. Oh, we're about to I, I'm good. I think you've <laughs> hit it all, Eric. I hit it all. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, one of the things, like I said, my, my mantra uh, that I like to tell people is really start to look at the habits that are currently not serving you and replace them with uh, successful habits that will. And we can talk about that on another episode. Um, and uh, we appreciate you guys for, for joining us today. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for our future episodes where we'll talk more about how to raise your consciousness, creating happiness, and topics that may come up. Hmm. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Thank you for tuning into the Cowfish Show. 
Check back for future episodes on raising consciousness, creating happiness, fulfillment, and love. And remember to find us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube at The Cowfish Show. 